So this is great exercise for starters because my fitness level has gone down a bit, but it's a great way to have a view of the city and some of the things that comes along. Okay, so I've got a local guide here who's going to be telling us Orlando the Morocco and explaining more details about the story for me and sharing it with you guys as we move. Okay. Yeah. Good afternoon. I welcome you to the Morocco Tourist Complex. My name is Ayobani. Thank you. I'm very going much. to be your guide. I'll be taking you around to show some historical places that we have around the rock. Okay. And we start with the story this afternoon. We are on the first level of the Morocco. Yes. The Morocco altogether is in three stages. From the base of the road to the first landing skip, you have climbed 120 stairs to come this far. Wow. And I'm very sure you are fit to climb to its summit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that is correct. That's yes. great to know. Yes. The first level of the rock is called Lisha B Garden. Mm -hmm. Lisha B Garden is named after one of our past warriors called Lisha B. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's against the oil. Yes, Agumba Kala. Yes. It was one of those that led the people of Egba out of Oud or your empire. It's a natural garden set aside to honor him. We have two trees here that we can so talk about. The first tree is the Dungoyaro tree. Mm -hmm. it. English call it name. It botanicizes as Adirata indica. If you get from the leaf of the tree and cook cassava and drink, it cures malaria. Ah. And if you drink from a stick, it clever bread from mouth. Ah. Should be a popular, popular tree then. Yeah, very famous. And its right. name is derived from an outer face, yeah. which means top boy, yeah. Dogo. I grew up in yeah. uh, Medjugorje. Wow, you should so know I that know better than well, yeah. So this is a flamboyant tree, this very one. Okay. The flamboyant tree produces some long pods. Look at the branch of the tree. Mm -hmm. There are some pods there. If you get one of those pods, there are some seeds inside this when you tap or shake, it gives a kind of sand shake, shake. Oh yeah, I know that. That was where the Yoruba oh, derived its name from. That's why they call it Spansheke in the Yoruba land. Ah, so they have the place to sit up with all those type of trees. Yeah, this tree dominated that area back then. That was why ah, they called it Yoruba Spansheke. Ah, so when we go on the rock with Toran, you will see some shrines and worshippers of our deities. Okay. They are not harmful. They are here oh, to I reveal know. our culture and tradition. 100% support them. So we're heading to the second landing. Second landing. How many staircases are here? Uh, we have 53 stairs to meet up. Okay. At the second landing. At the second landing, we have the shrine. Then after that is the cave, where the people of Egbert took refuge. Amen. During so the cave was where the people of Egbert took to refuge. Hide. Yeah, during their Daomerids. entire tribal wars. So after that, we have the, some traditional worshippers around the rock. Oh. I don't know if you'd like to see. Is this one of them? Oh. Is it one of them? Yes, they monitor the shrine. Uh, I remember about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. So this is the main shrine of Uluma Rock. Okay. The main shrine of the rock. This is where the people of Egbert worship and make sacrifices to Uluma Rock yearly. So did. To date, mm -hmm. Oluma Rock is an historical monument. It's also a symbol of Egba unity, mm -hmm. strength, and unfailing protection. Under the rock, sometimes ago, the people of Egba took refuge during an intertribal war. And after the war, they have been sacrificing the rock. Egba people offer the sacrifice once in a year with a big black cow. Mm -hmm. During the festival, the festival preceded with booming of guns by the hunters. Um, beating our local drums to call the people in the environment aware that the festival has begun. During that time, the Alaki of Egbala and the chief priests are the mainly two people to allow to enter Till the shrine. Till date. During the festival, the Alaki of Egbala will pray for the whole nation. Mm -hmm. He pray for Egba unity, also the climbers of Uluma Rock, so that they will not fall. Okay. And no one has ever fallen from the rock That's while amazing. climbing. Also at the shrine, some traditional believers always come to make their requests in times of prayers. Maybe they are looking for weights, children, or anything in life. Mm -hmm. When the prayer is answered, those that made pledges while praying will come back to redeem their pledges. That's why I pursue those feathers and blood. 
Uh, so the feathers represent uh, sign of pledges people yeah. have been returning. Ah, oh, okay, okay, okay. Why prayer have been answered? Okay, okay, okay. okay. Get it. And those people refer to this rock as Ulumo Abelowo, Abelomo, Abeloro. Many in the day you can pray through for wet, children, and every other good things in life. Got it. Lastly, there are four traditional rulers in Abel Futa. The Alaki of Egbalan, that is the paramount ruler of this town. Oshile of Okiono, Agura of Bagura, and Uluwo of Uwu. Those are the four major traditional rulers in Abel Futa. So we are heading to the cave where the people of Egbalan really took refuge. Wonderful. Yeah. All right, Baba. So we're going to the main hideout itself. The reason why it's called Abe Okuta. The Okuta they were talking about yes. going gone. Where the people of Egba really took refuge mm -hmm. during the intertribal wars. This grave shows the final resting place of Chief Sonny. That was the grave of Chief Sonny. Chief Sonny was DOC of Itoko during his lifetime. Okay. We have Itoko community at the back here. Oh, okay. Why was the Chief Tansi title of someone that sits at the death of a king in the palace? He oh, took top position to the king. According to the custom and tradition of the Yorubas, when the chief died, they buried the chief at the back of his house. That was why he was buried there. And this is the family house of Chief Sonny. Oh, that's his... Uh... Oh, okay. okay. Chief Sonny died on the 23rd of January, 1956. Mm -hmm. 20 years after his death, government took over this place as a tourist site. That was why government decided to fence the family house mm -hmm. so that they would not be blocking the passage okay, of the people. tourists. Wonderful. So how must they have hidden inside this place like can you imagine can you come again how how did they hide like yes basically before they got to this place Egba used to be a very thick forest mm. the whole thing started in 1830 when the Egbas were having oppression and depression from Ud or your yeah, empire yeah, yeah. they want their freedoms and where to hide that was why they consulted the forest for information and the fire instructed them to take their leave. But on their way coming to this place, they met a man on the road. The name of the man is called Adagba. Adagba was a great hunter farmer. During that time, the entire city of Abekuta was a thick forest. Only the powerful ones and the warriors that would come around to do anything and return back home alive. Adagba brought the Egba down here and they settled there for three years. Mm. That was between 1830 and 1833. During their stay here, they took the natural suspension shape of the rock advantage yeah. and built their rooms on that day. The rock is naturally suspended, nothing is holding it up. Yeah. They only took the advantage of the shape and built their rooms. They built five rooms while they were here. Four of the rooms had collapsed, it remains only one. That was where they kept their wives and children. Wait, which one? Where's, where's the main room? Come and see that. This is the only remaining room. Oh, wow. This okay, are the sign um, of the falling mm, room. Yeah. Wow. That was where they kept their wives and children. Oh, where men and warriors, amazing. men and warriors will surround the rock. Wow. So that the enemy will not gain access to where they kept their families. Oh, All these wow. holes you are seen on the surface of the rock. That was where they do their groundings. Like we use blenders uh, now. Uh, so the continual process of the grinding make it deep the, like this. Yeah. After the war in 1833, black people consulted the forest again to ask. Maybe they should leave this place to go back to where they came from. Which was Oyo? Oyo. Okay. Or to go and settle in another environment. Okay. But if I told them to keep on dwelling here, that this is where God has put a name to their problems. Okay. And so when they, so okay, so are the Egba people are an Oyo group of people? Yes. Before nah. the Egba gained their independence from Oyo. Where were they? They were living under old Oyo Empire. I but there's physically. a community there uh, called Orile Egba. Okay, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. but they decided to leave because of series of maltreatment that by the Oyos. Yeah, by the Oyos. more especially okay. the Laris. Then okay. those are the task collectors. Yeah, the Laris. So, those, those are the only sabi sacked mm -hmm. from. They want an end to all those abnormalities. Yeah, that was why they decided to leave and settle around the rock. Okay, okay, okay. So okay. why they were. Uh, where they, when they were ended in 1833, they consulted the four to confirm maybe they should leave to go back or to settle in another environment. But if I told them to keep on dwelling, that this is where God has put an end to their tribulations. Okay. And that's the meaning of Ulufi Mo. 
where God put an end to our problem is interpreted in Yoruba that be ti oluwa fi mo gbogbo gun wa lati da mo aye wa olu fi mo in court but people later shorten it to olu mo to make ah, more so money actually olu fi mo right olu fi mo so you so why we basically fought to so this rock played the role not only because i thought it was about the dao man yes i uh, so not quite know why they said to the one that got them here was uh oyo but not quite long why they said to down that one road between a band and down yeah yeah but basically we don't uh spread out for that because uh it's not too much related because it was not a fight for freedom mm. they only uh fought it down because of share of boundaries okay yeah okay, okay. A battle for freedom, mm -hmm. but a battle for sure of boundary. Uh, boundary. Ah, so okay. Then, when that ended, so they were living here, and people have opportunity of building houses around. Mm -hmm. So when people saw them, they asked them of their whereabouts during the war period, mm -hmm. and they told them we hid ourselves under the rock, under the rock or beneath the rock in Yoruba, Mr. Abeokuta. So uh, since then, they referred to them as Sarah Abeokuta. Uh, so the Egba become light as a name. So people yeah. refer to them as Arabic Kuta, Kuta, Arabic Kuta. Yeah. So and the name got changed from there. Interesting. So if you have been anywhere in town, if you are not visit here, you haven't been to Abel Kuta. Yeah, so this Officially is now real, we're coming to original. This Abel is the real Abel Kuta. So a cabo. <laughs> Top of the mountain. We see other traditionalists on the way as well. <clears throat> Water pot. Oh, okay. The cocoa. Okay. 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 This is on local water pots here. Farico. Mm. Used to be a crown tree. Okay. It is called the Gia Coco in Yoruba land. If a king has to be installed or they want to make a chief dance title in Yoruba land, no, right. the plot from the leaf of the tree and hang at the corner of the they symbolize royalty. Till date. Till date. Is it this particular tree or like anywhere the tree? The other one says, yeah, but this very one is mainly used for the paramount ruler of this town. So I like your face, but it's only for you. Interesting. Uh, Coastal reflecting the Yalumo. Mama is believed to have lived for 137 years. She, 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 she like, celebrated her 137 birthday Where is she? two years ago. She doesn't come in here regularly anymore because I of her. I remember when I was younger. We're going to the final spot. Yes. So yeah, we're going yeah. to the final spot of Olumorok itself to see how we can get a CD view of this amazing spot. This is a baobab tree. Baobab. In the eastern part of Nigeria, they call it Afonakunwa. In the northern part, they call it Kuka. Here in Southwest, we call it Gyoshi. Gyoshi. Okay. It's botanical is Adansonia digitata. The significance of the tree is that traditional believers always come here to pray for protection from the hands of the enemy under the tree. There's an adage in Yoruba which goes thus: Meaning there is no way you can run your arms around the tree. It is impossible because of its massiveness. That's why traditional believers always come here to pray for protections. Uh, so this is like good traditional, like Central Bank. You know, okay. you know Central Bank <laughs> is a bank. Bank. money. <laughs> I know, I mean, you know, uh, this is about allow us come to pray for protection, have you? Yes. Uh, uh, traditional worship. Okay, traditional okay, believers. Okay, okay. Yep. Come gently. Oh. Make sure you gain your balance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm doing your rest of it. Okay, so we're almost there. Uh, boy, I need to actually have one trainers before coming here. So please wear your trainers before coming to. Only more rock, no bigger this half leather shoe. Oof. And here we are. This is the very top. But we have a little more to go. Oh, okay, okay, we're almost there. We have another step to climb, but the view here is impressive. Wonderful. 
That's right where we started from the ground there and we're up in the sky. The view is amazing. I can imagine if what could have been done with this place if I built it was much more busier, but it's, it's a beautiful spot. So we're still going up, we're still going some steps higher. I had to take off my shoes. Please wear trainers or something solid. All these are half half leather shoes. Whoa, solid. So let me hold the shoes first. So we come up like this. Ah, this. Mm. Hmm. Ah. Um. Um. Spider-Man. Hey! Ah! I made it to <laughs> the very top. Yes. The very top of Luma Rock. Yes. So you get this rewarding view. Beautiful view. Yeah, welcome to the summit of Luma Rock. <laughs> <laughs> we did made it. it. <laughs> from here you can view almost everywhere in town. Ah yeah. From the base of Volumara to the highest point, the height is 137 meters. So we're 137 meters now. Yeah, above sea level. Let's figure out some important places in Abeokuta, like the first church in Nigeria. Look from this side, you see a school on the rock painted with lemon color. Yes. Look beyond that, there's a structure that has a tower at the front. Yeah, that's the first church. That's they are reconstructing it now, have you? Mm -hmm. Cathedral Church of St. Peter. I think that's the first mosque. Oh, in Ogun State, I think. In Negbalan. In Negbalan, there, that's the first mosque. Yeah. The church was built in 1844 by Henry Townsend. And from this side, there's a long mass, that long tower. Yeah. That's the transmitter mass of NTA, Nigerian Television ah. Authority, okay, Goya. Ah. NTA was the first television station we have here in Abeokuta. Check under it, you see two separated buildings right under the mass. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's Old Baptist Boys High School. Yeah, old Baptist Boys High School, a school former president attended Chief Olusha Gomba Sonjo, former interim president of Nigeria and Nigeria. Le Chief Mk Adiola. So many other the greatest in Ogun State and Nigeria attended yeah, that yeah, school. Yeah. Then from here you see a building constructed like a church painted with chocolate line with white. That is the first central mosque in Egba Land. Yeah. Egba Central Mosque, Kobiti. Egba yeah. Central Mosque, Kobiti was rebuilt in 1925. Behind the mosque, there are some red roof houses. Mm -hmm. That was the family house of Lechi Femme to Abiola. Bagura! Bagura ah, Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. That's, his, that's MK Abiola's family house. Family house. Yeah. Ah. So this is an Iroko tree. The tree is fruited in the middle of the rock and it's flourishing. We have Ogun River from this side. Ogun ah, State is named after, after the, the river. river. That's yeah. why the state is called Ogun State. Yeah. And the river runs across four states in South Wales. It yeah. runs through Lagos, Undu, or you are not sure. The river later busted to the Atlantic Ocean. Follow the river, you get to the sea. Lastly, we have eight different meanings and interpretations to Ogun. O G U N. We have Ogun, God of Iron. Ogun, War. Ogun, Mercy, Nation. Ogun, Inheritance or Property. Another Ogun, that's for Figure 20. Ogun, for something long or longevity. Ogun, for sweat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ogun, to climb, like we've been climbing the rock. A band time says, no, you okay, you won't quit telling. He be like baby, me see you. He be like baby, told me that bow. He lay on me, me run. My yo, my yo, my yo, my yo. Lordy, yo, Lumo. My yo, my yo, my yo. Lordy, yo, Lumo. So let's do my yo, my yo together now. My yo, my yo, my yo. Lordy, yo, Lumo. My yo, my yo, my yo. Lordy, yo, Lumo. So I welcome you to Lumo Tourist Complex. Thank you very much. Thank you.